Leadership is to take action in a way that adds value to someone else. We talked about vision, priorities, and alignment as one exercise. We've talked about trying to understand your leadership style as another exercise. And there's yet another exercise, which I think is the hardest one of all, which is understanding yourself. Why can't I do what vision, priorities, alignment exercises tells me I need to do? Why, when I get feedback on my leadership style, why can't I? change my leadership style? What's holding me back? Why do I feel reluctant? Why do I feel vulnerable? What's going on with me, my life story? And, and yeah, if this sounds touchy-feely and psychological, it is. It's much more politically correct to talk about vision, priorities, and alignment, and to talk about leadership style. Different leaders have different levels of comfort in talking about trying to understand themselves. And I've found more and more leaders are more comfortable realizing that if they want to be effective and they want their companies or organizations to be effective, they need to spend more time understanding themselves and helping their people be authentic and understanding themselves. Understanding yourself is a critical series of exercises you need to do if you're going to become a more effective leader. This is coming to grips with who you are and why you do what you do. And if you're like me, uh, most of us are spending our entire lives still trying to understand this. But if you want to be a leader, if you want to figure out what you believe with an ownership mindset, act in a way that adds value to others, in order to do that, you've got to understand why you do what you do, particularly if you want to take on greater levels of leadership in more complex situations. This starts with understanding your story, understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Third, what are your passions? So the first order business is understanding your story. And I always like to say each of us has three stories. There's the facts of your life story. I was born in Kansas, I went to University of Kansas, then I went to work for Pete Marwick, then I went to Harvard Business School, and then so on and so forth. Some of us, including me, forget if your parents were divorced, if God forbid you had the death of a parent or a sibling, that's also part of your story. And for many people, it's painful to even look back on that. But factually, as best you can, write down the story. Then there's two narratives that people use from that story. One I call the success narrative. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because most people are extremely familiar with their success narrative once I explain it. That's the story you tell when you meet somebody, you go to a cocktail reception dinner and say, oh, you know, I'm Rob Cal, I went to Kansas, and my father's a jewelry salesman, and then I did this and this. If you're being really authentic, you might say, I had this setback, but then I gathered myself, and then I did this and this and this and this. And I call it the success narrative because you're always the hero of the story. Now, there are lots of people who coach people on how to better tell their success narrative. I'm not one of them because those muscles, in my opinion, are overused. The story I'm most interested in is your failure narrative. That's a story that you're not telling at the cocktail party. It isn't getting posted on social media. And that's the story for many of you that you're telling yourself. Okay, uh, I'm not good enough. I failed, I was betrayed, okay? Or I betrayed someone, I'm not trustworthy. Someone betrayed me, no one is trustworthy. I got fired, it wasn't fair. I'm disgusted with everybody, but secretly, it was my fault. I'm not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough, okay? I made a decision, I had a choice of going this way, and I should have gone this way, and I went that way, and I can't forgive myself for it. Can't forgive myself for it. Uh, I hate to say, I was in an abusive relationship, which unfortunately more people than we realize are, and that wound is still there, and it, will, it just won't heal, and so-and-so comes into my life and does something, and 
They can't understand why I had such a reaction because in my mind, it affected the narrative of my life. I'm interested most in that failure narrative because that's the story under stress that many people tell themselves, not the success narrative. So back to leadership. In order to do all that stuff, you gotta open yourself up. You gotta be authentic, you gotta be vulnerable. What is it about your failure narrative that is holding you back from doing that? Why can't I build relationships with trust, mutual respect where I confide in people? Why do I always overreact to X, Y, and Z? Why can't I coach people? Why can't I seek advice? Why, why, why? Why am I too confrontational? Why am I not confrontational enough? Why, 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 why? Most of the why goes into your story, but particularly your failure narrative. And what I want to make sure is when you're under stress, what's the story you're telling yourself? For a lot of people, they revert right back to that failure narrative. And that triggers a reaction. And when you see somebody act in a way you can't explain, you know there's a story behind it. May not have anything to do with you or the situation. Maybe something happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. And what I want is for you to try to better understand that narrative, be aware of it, and maybe you can count to 10 or stop some of the behavior that you decide after the fact is not productive, leadership behavior that is undermining to what you're trying to do because you're not cognizant enough or not aware enough of this failure narrative.